Let's go on our vintage adventure. Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is my quiet crafting space. Today I'm having a look at the signatures that I've been making and putting together. So this year I'm making four signatures over the year, one for each season. And this one, this one, is the one for spring. And I have made a pouch for it. All of this can be found on my playlist for Sender Signature 2024. So if you'd like to follow along, if you'd like to make your own signature at home and have a play, then this is all you would need to do. You just need to bind some papers together in a very small signature. That is the latest project. I've been looking for that, so I've just literally found that. But this is a corner page bookmark that we are making for this month's project. So last month we made the signature, we made the pouch and we sent off a little ephemera holder which is this which is very cute. We made some tickets and we put all sorts of things in there and then that has been sent off like that with a pouch. So if you wanted to make a pouch uh, with a momigami method then that is available for you to have a look at and make these sort of things at home. And this is a very soft, very cool, very nicely altered paper in which you can now now move about like a fabric and then I've been able to add all the things inside. So I'm just using all the things that I've been sent from my happy mail and I'm just putting it in a dedicated place because sometimes happy mail, people are saying thank you, they're boosting my supplies, it's absolutely wonderful, but it can get overwhelming because I don't always process it. I don't always put it somewhere. I always sort of feel, oh, that's from somebody, so that's special, so I better keep it and do so something really nice with it to, to honour that memory of me receiving it. So this year I thought I'm doing it differently. I'm not going to hoard it till the end of the year and they, then make one big journal for the following year. I am going to just make things as I go and just use snippets and little things that I've been sent that I think is really good. So this is what I've got here. So the pouch is going to hold all the little pieces, the extra bits that I'm not using. I've got this lovely stone which has been sent to me. I have been told so I can look that up and find out exactly what that is so thank you so much to the subscriber that told me what that but is we will get that I might even put that up on the screen now if I've remembered so this is the project that I'm working on for sender signature this is a second little one which I've just got to keep my ideas so all things that I make I'm just keeping as little idea reference and uh, those are going in there so this was the ephemera holder that I received and it came with this lace to wrap around which was brilliant, I like that and I love the colours so much, the turquoise and the rusty brown, sort of a, a lovely alternative grungy colours to brown, I just think that's wonderful. And then I found this scrapbooking paper in this turquoise blue which seemed to just totally complement the lace that I'd received and I really liked it with the teal colours, it had some tear damage there so I thought this is perfect for a junk journal project and I have just glued it down onto the front page so I haven't done the back, I've just done that to the front so I thought I would show you what I'm up to so you can see how I'm strengthening my signature and giving it a front cover. And then I really liked this coral red binding um, thread here that's been used and it even picked out the lines on this map so the whole thing just it just was here and I thought oh that just works that has to go there so I can't tell you where I got it because I can't remember it's one of those things that has just been in my craft room for a while I've loved the colours and I've not known what to do with it and then I couldn't use it for anything special because it had a rip in it so it was in the junk journal scrap pile and it it comes with another sheet as well. It came with three sheets actually. So um, there's this one as well. But there was another one which had a nautical crab on it. And I think that that would have been quite good. But I can't find it. So I'm probably going to use that for the back cover. Unless the other one turns up in a minute. I don't know where it's gone. It's gone on its own travels around the craft room. Which isn't hard in this 
um, in this room. <laughs> Lots of projects on the go at the moment. So in this video I am going to be giving away a freebie which is very exciting which goes with this project for the vintage travel. So you'll be able to have a look at the Kofi shop page. You'll be finding the freebie there for April so that will be great because I'll just show you that and we're going to make something with the freebie page today which goes in this little journal signature. So we'll get the freebie and also attached to the freebie is a, a little full kit also going to be part of the story that I'm telling today and that is all about the wonderful American adventurer Nellie Bly from 1890 and her amazing travels around the world. So we're going to have a look at that today and then the kit that I will show you in just a moment is also part of this and it will be free to all of my Kofi monthly members. So before I show you that I'll just catch you up to speed with all of this. So we've got a front cover now going on here, we've got a little bit of a collage starting there, we've got a some scraps that I have been sent. I'm just decorating things as I go. I'm determined to use the things that I'm sent and not have them sitting around. So the vintage adventure could have meant anything. It could have meant fashion or fiction. It could have meant cookery. It could have been any era from a vintage style, any antique, vintage, anything at all. Anything with a vintage vibe. But because I was sent, the first image that came to me was a hot air balloon. I had the 1920s. I've got this wonderful travelling, a little bit of a steampunk vibe here. And I've got some interesting different texts from around the world. So on the back here there was some wonderful uh, dictionary, book page and different languages going on. And I think that that's great. And then up there I think it's Sweden or Norway. But I am looking to make some interesting things because this is a personal project for me now. Using wonderful things that I've been sent from friends around the UK. But this swap is also going on around the world and if you are interested in getting involved in one of the treasured page swaps, uh, you can either play along at home and not swap with anybody or you can head, head over to the Facebook page which is the treasured page FB group and I have a quarterly sign up and I'll be putting up a post next month to see if anybody else would like to to join in for our summer swap which is June, July and August and hopefully we can find people in your country. Now Anita if you are watching from the Netherlands, Anita in the Netherlands, thank you so much for all your continued support over here on the treasured page. If you have a look on the Facebook group we have found another lady in the Netherlands and Margot would love to swap with you. So do go and check and get in contact with Margot. I will put you in a chat together and you girls can swap and be friends over in the Netherlands. This is really exciting and also if we have anybody else from Hong Kong do please get in touch because there's another lady there who would like to swap. Looking for somebody to swap with in your country do please head over to the Facebook page. The link is below in my link tree and you will be able to post up your interest there and see if you can find friends and a swap partner in your country. So we are sending kindness around the world. That is what the butterfly logo is all about here at the treasured page. We are sending a ripple effect of kindness and creativity and unlocking that wonderful artistic side of yourself that we all have and we can all have some playtime here at the treasured page and at your own quiet crafting spaces. Whew. Right, I'm on a roll today. I've got a cup of tea here. I'm trying to ignore the neighbour with his very noisy drill. So apologies if you hear anything in the background. That is what's going on. He is still repairing that roof. It's been nearly two years now. So these images inspired me. They are from the Digital Collage Club. This reminded me of perhaps Phileas Fogg, written by Jules Verne. So the story of the Phileas Fogg travelling 80 days around the world was actually surpassed and done in real life by none other than a woman. Oh yes, Nellie Bly, an American journalist. So we're going to have a look and listen to that and I'm going to show you some images which I shall be using to decorate my journal. And I'm also going to be putting my back cover on here just so you can see how I did that with a paper that is much shorter than what I need. 
Right, I've gone about this in a peculiar way. Really, I've just gone for it. I've gone for glue and I've gone for sticking. I probably should have measured it and cut it to the right size. So I should probably suggest that that's the best way. But in the spirit of this being junk journaling, and I don't really mind if it's slightly wonky, I'm just going to put that down there. I've only glued up to that bit. I've, I will put more glue up there in a minute when I get the other scrap. So I'm just putting this down, getting it where I need it, and then I'll open this back page up, smooth that down. Yes, get the bone folder on there for a bit of pressure and stick that down where we want it. So that's that and then I'm just to trim off the excess but yes you could have measured it correctly first there we go we're just I'm just going to hold that in place okay so that's stuck there that's looking okay for the time being and then we're just going to put this top bit on there and just magically it fits perfectly so these signatures are 11 centimeters by 21 centimeters that's eight and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches that's just the size that we have specified to work here within the group so that everybody comes up with the same size and then i can just tell you the measurements all the way through so if we stick to those measurements and if you're following along or want to make anything you can all come up with a similar measurement size. So I'm just going to trim that bit along the top there. So that is now nice and neat if we want it neat. And then on the back here, we'll just put that there. And then a little bit of extra glue along that top bit. And I can put this scrap here. And I think I'll have this bit because I like that blue there. And just add it all in and then all the colours work because it's all part of the same piece of paper. We will see a line but you know I'll probably add more decoration there as we go. Not sure at the moment, just nice to have those options so a piece of lace or a bit of trim or something could easily go there. So we'll just make sure that that is going in nicely so I'm going to trim it off and keep the scrap so that's how that's looking so there we go I've now got front and back decorated and strengthened so that's nice and I'm leaving the binding exposed because I like the coral color it seems to work really nicely with the color here on the map and also I want the option if I do want to bind these into anything else I can cut the strings and rebind it or I can put down the edge some fabric maybe in a matching color or a contrasting color and I would just glue that on it up and have this nice rustic boho situation going on here very fun so it's all about playing that was the scrap from the front cover there so these are nice little interesting pieces that I can use so have a look at your scrapbooking papers see if you've got anything you might want to decorate the front of your signature in my vintage adventure has very much been inspired by the scraps and the little pieces and the ephemera that I have received from my swap partner Kirsten and all the lovely little things that she sent me so she has sent me this folded up little boat little paper boat and I think that that's really really special so I started to have a look at that and I've been inspired by the colours here as you can see I'm now bringing that into the project of what I've got going on here and very much by her lace that she has given me and it's just really great and I, uh, all my colours and I've added a little scrap of my own there and a scrap of the red which was picking out this hot air balloon now all of these pieces are movable and I can use them at any time but I do like them in here and I love this coming and sitting over there and being able to be used. So I'm using this for creative journaling as a glue book. I can write some notes if I want to and I can put artwork and I can paint in here, all things. Thinking about Phileas Fogg and understanding that that was a fictional character written by Jules Verne and that was in 1890. In that time frame it also inspired Elizabeth Jane 
Cochrane. OK, the freebie today will be what you see in front of you. There are two sheets. You've got some ephemera pieces and a background piece. And this is lovely because it can go in either way. It can be folded like that and you'd have the lace trim at top and bottom. But, but you can also do interesting tags or you can cut it up and use it that way. So it's multi-directional. You can also use the lace pieces here as corner tucks or as corner bookmarks. That is one of our projects this month. So that is a freebie. You can go and help yourself download that. Have a look at the link in the description box here on YouTube. You'll be able to find the link to my shop and download this one for free. If you would like the full kit, you will also get both of these pieces in the kit, but you will also receive more ephemera pieces and some beautiful images that I have put together for you. And that is for the treasured page and the kit is called Nellie Bly. And this is Nellie Bly and I'm going to tell you her story and how I came about creating this kit by being inspired by her. So these are the background pieces and they are really lovely. I so love that one. I think that that's really nice. I'm going to use that one today. And then some wonderful lace and coffee dyed papers there. And then this one's quite fun. There's this one as well. Beautiful. Look great when they're folded. So if this was a page, you could have that at the top with a lace trim there, or it could be like that. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Same with this one. And these would fit any theme because they've got the floral, botanical, sweeping images in there, so they will work with any of the kits that I am producing. These are nice, fun backing papers that you can put to some junk mail scraps and then you can decorate the front with a collage. So that's just nice little background pieces that give you pockets. So that one could be a pocket, that one could be a belly band, you know, that could be a side tuck. There's lots that you could do their little strips and things to make extra pieces so that was fun that was lovely grungy tones you can make it more grungy if you want um, but they are nice little papers that could be added into lighter colored tea tea stain or coffee stain papers and those ones are very similar but you get two of those slightly different you get a border down that one and then you have this which is amazing so, so these are the images to create your ephemera and all sorts of things that you might want to you can definitely make envelopes out of that and then be able to de decorate it up with something more pretty on top and there's some tags there as well so hopefully that's all showing with the vintage travel but also the dressmakers and then her on the steam boats and the things that she would have discovered in some far off different lands. So the story of Nellie Bly is historically correct but I have played around with the theme and I've used that to inspire some vintage adventure in my own mind and so therefore we've got some fantasy images here where we've got um, hot air balloons and things and just contraptions and things that may not have existed let's say but still beautiful nonetheless and uh, definitely if it were in my world trams would most certainly be painted in this way. So these are little porthole windows into my world and my vision here at the treasured page and if you'd like to make something with these little portholes and see what you could come up with with your own creativity uh, do have a look at this kit over on my coffee shop page it is available for you if you just like the backgrounds you can get the backgrounds if you want the ephemera you can get the ephemera and I do offer it in US letter as well as A4 brilliant so we're going to be using this one today so these can be cut out torn out fussy cut fussy torn or punched out with circle punches I'm cutting out this image. This is, of course, going to be my character for the story today. That is Nellie Bly. And she was originally born as Elizabeth Jane Cochrane. She was born in May in 1864. Now, this is a true story. So now I've got everything cut out of the freebie page. I got some scraps here, and that is because on the back I have put the image here from the backgrounds, which I don't think I showed you. So this is another one that you would get as part of the kit. Lovely paper, really good. You could chop that down and make some really nice tags 
as a background and then collage onto the top of it. So it, even that alone just looks really great and you start putting some things on, um, maybe some more florals and things that would work because it's got the nice blues and greens in there as well as the browns. So it's a little bit grungy, but you can make it really pretty with your own things as well. Bringing in butterflies and flowers would look super. And then I'm just going to be cutting this out again because I want this extra piece here. And I just thought actually, if you're printing it on card, you could make a front and a back cover of a mini booklet so that would work really nicely um, so I'm gonna look I've come out with about three ideas for this piece alone um, and also the bird the bird can be cut out away from the clocks and be something so it, it depends on what style you like but there's something for everybody here whether you want grunge whether you want shabby chic you can pick it out it's all here steampunk going on you could you could develop this in whichever way you you like and then once you've got it backed you've got interesting scraps coming through as well Just a simple arrangement like that gives you something fun a straight away and then all we'd need is one of these flowers on top of it and we've got something really cute or the lady where's she gone where's Nellie I've lost Nellie here she is so she could come and live on the top of there and then the colours all work so that's fun just with some scraps you would need the kit for that particular darker background make up some lovely scraps actually like that might keep that that's a good idea let's put that there and I've got her again here so it's lovely isn't it so look how nice that is when you fold it in half and imagine if that was much bigger you'd have that as your journal page but just as a little piece of ephemera that's really sweet and I like that and so we're going to have that Elizabeth Jane Cochrane was born May the 5th in 1864 in Cochrane's Mills, now part of the Brunel Township, Armstrong County, Pennsylvania. Her father, Michael Cochrane, born around 1810, started out as a labourer and a mill worker before buying the local mill and most of the land surrounding his family farmhouse. He later became a merchant, a postmaster, an associate justice at Cochrane Mills, which was named after him in Pennsylvania. Michael married twice. He had ten children with his first wife, Catherine Murphy, and five more children, including Elizabeth Cochrane, his thirteenth daughter, with his second wife, Mary Jane Kennedy. Michael Cochrane died in 1870 when Elizabeth was only six years old. As a young girl, Elizabeth was often called pink because she so frequently wore that colour. But as a teenager, she wanted to portray herself as more sophisticated and so she dropped the nickname and she changed her surname to Cochrane with an E. In 1879, she enrolled in Indiana Normal School, now Indiana University of Pennsylvania, but only for one term, and she was then forced to drop out due to lack of funds. And in 1880, Elizabeth's mother moved the family to the city of Pittsburgh. Then, in 1885, a column in the Pittsburgh Dispatch entitled what girls are good for, stated that girls were principally there for birthing children and keeping house. Well, this prompted Elizabeth to write a response under the pseudonym of Lonely Orphan Girl. And the editor, George Madden, was so impressed with her passion that he ran an advertisement asking for the author to come forward and identify herself. When Elizabeth introduced herself to the editor, he offered her the opportunity to write a piece for the newspaper, again under the pseudonym of Lonely Orphan Girl. Her first article for the dispatch was entitled the girl puzzle. It argued that not all women would marry and that what was needed were better jobs for women. Her second article, Mad Marriages, was about how divorce affected women. 
In it, she argued the reform for divorce laws. Mad Marriages was published under the byline of Nellie Bly rather than Lonely Orphan Girl. It was customary for women who wrote newspapers at that time to use pen names and not their real names, and so the editor chose Nellie Bly after the African-American title character in a popular song, Nellie Bly by Stephen Foster. Elizabeth originally intended that her pseudoname be spelt with a Y, but her editor wrote it incorrectly, much to her annoyance with an I-E instead of a Y, and the error stuck. George Madden was impressed again by Elizabeth, now Nellie Bly, and he offered her a full-time job as a journalist. As a writer, Nellie Bly focused her work for the Pittsburgh Dispatch on the lives of working women, writing a series of investigative articles on working women in factories, However, the newspaper soon received complaints from factory owners about her writings and she was resigned to the women's pages to cover only fashion, society and gardening. The usual role for women journalists and she became dissatisfied. She was still only 21 and she was determined to do something no girl had done before. And so, at that time, she travelled to Mexico to serve as a foreign correspondent. She spent nearly half a year reporting on the lives and the customs of the Mexican people. And her dispatches later were published in a book called Six Months in Mexico. In one report, Nellie protested the imprisonment of a local journalist for criticising the Mexican government, then a dictatorship. When Mexican authorities learnt of Bly's report, they threatened her with arrest, prompting her to flee the country. But when safely home, she would not be silenced and Nellie started reporting even more. Sadly, this outspoken approach got Nellie into more hot water and she left the Pittsburgh dispatch in 1887 for New York. There she faced rejection after rejection as news editors would not consider hiring a woman. Penniless, after four months, she talked her way into the offices of Joseph Pulitzer, the newspaper and the New York world, and took an undercover assignment for which she agreed to feign insanity and investigate reports of brutality and neglect at the Women's Lunatic Asylum on Blackwell's Island, now named Roosevelt Island. And it was not easy for Nellie to be admitted to the asylum and pretend to be mad. She first decided to check herself into a boarding house called Temporary Homes for Females. She stayed up all night to give herself a wide-eyed look of a disturbed woman and began making accusations to other boarders to prove that she might be insane. Nellie told the assistant matron there are so many crazy people about and one can never tell what one will do next. She refused to go to bed and eventually scared so many other boarders that the police were called to take her to the nearby courthouse. Once examined by a police officer, a judge and a doctor, Nellie was taken to Bellevue for a few days and then after valuation she was sent by boat to Blackwell's Island. Nellie was committed to the asylum and she experienced the deplorable conditions first hand. After 10 days she was released by thanks to the World Newspaper and her report was published in October the 9th in 1887 and later a book which was entitled Ten Days in a Madhouse. It caused a sensation. It prompted the asylum to implement reforms and brought her lasting fame. She had a significant impact on American culture and shed light on the experience of marginalised women beyond the bounds of asylum as she ushered in the era of stunt girl journalism. 
And then in 1893, Bly used celebrity status she had gained from the Asylum Report skills to schedule an exclusive interview with the alleged insane serial killer Lizzie Halliday. Her two-part series in October 1887 was a sensation, effectively launching the decade of stunt or detective reporting, a clear precursor to investigative journalism. The employment of stunt girls has often been dismissed as a circulating, boosting gimmick of the sensationalist press. However, the genre also provided women with their first collective opportunity to demonstrate that, as a class, they had the skills necessary for the highest level of general reporting. The stunt girls, with Nellie Bly as their prototype, were the first women to enter the journalistic mainstream in the 20th century. And the first stunt that we will hear about is the the around-the-world travel and that, of course, was inspired by Jules Verne's story with the 80 days around the world. And we will have a look at that next time and I will give you the next instalment of this pioneering journalist, Nellie Bly. Well, I hope you've enjoyed coming along on my vintage adventure today to have a look at the life and story of Nellie Bly, who at the age of 26 embarks on this epic journey. And we will come back to the story in the next video, which I shall be putting together shortly, and we will have the second part so we can understand why and how she travels around the world in such a short space of time and who she meets along the way. So that's an inspirational story to help you craft along and I hope that you found some fun and value here today at the Treasured Page looking at the different ephemera pieces and how you might tie it together in your own page spreads and making something very simple from not very much at all. It's lovely to look at this feminine piece as we listen to the story of Nellie Bly who is very much a pioneering woman standing up for women's rights and looking at all the hard labour and things that women would have endured in the 1800s and being able to bring some of that energy into our own craft. Just recognise the strength and the adventurers that we can be in our own crafts as we look at some plain papers and turn them into something with a story and with a theme and a mood and definitely something that we can all just delve into our scraps and just embellish further with a few simple paper images. So do have a look at the coffee shop and download your free images so that you can have a play if you so wish and I'm sure you found some elements there that you may like to bring into your own crafts, have a little go. There's tags and tickets and if you are a monthly member to my coffee shop you will be able to get the full kit and everything there and all my future digitals as well will be available to you as you support the treasured page. Thank you very much for joining me today and above everything else just slow down and make crafting time for you bye bye now Mm -hmm.